on Dolphins, it's your boy Dylan and I'm back with you for another day of news and notes, another day of training camp, so <clears throat> uh, go ahead and get right into it. Uh, this first article I have here is from Bleacher Report, it's undrafted free agents turning heads in every camp. So for us, they have uh, linebacker Kaysen Collins. The Miami Dolphins may have found a gem in undrafted linebacker Kaysen Collins. The North Carolina product has stood out with his physicality in training camp, and he has the potential to add attitude to the defense. Collins has been a very physical presence during camp, Omar Kelly of the Sun Sentinel wrote. He's caught my eye. Collins likely caught the Dolphins' attention with his ability to make plays in a variety of ways. He logged 83 total tackles, 4.5 tackles for a loss, 2 sacks, 2 forced fumbles, and 2 fumble recoveries in 2017. All right. So let's see. Okay, and then the next one. Um, this is from Dolphins Wire. This is about Bashad, uh, Bashad Breland uh, visiting the Dolphins today. Uh, throughout training camp, Torrey McTire and Cordray Tankersley have been competing for the starting cornerback spot. Apparently, they're not satisfied with how either one is performed. According to Josina Anderson of ESPN, Bashad Breland is set to visit with the Dolphins on Sunday. Breland signed a contract with the Panthers during the offseason, but the contract was voided when he failed a physical after cutting his foot on a trip to the Dominican Republic after it became infected. Breland worked out for the Patriots earlier this week. He has also visited with the Ravens, Colts, Browns, Raiders, Cardinals, and Chiefs as well. Initially a fourth round pick of the Redskins in 2014, Breland started in 58 career games has, as he uh, has eight interceptions, 59 pass breakups, and seven forced fumbles. With neither McTire or Tankersley emerging as the clear starter opposite Xavier Howard, it makes sense the Dolphins would take a look at him. Okay, so as I mentioned um, in my last video, they are bringing him in today. Obviously, that you know talks about it a little more. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, um, we certainly got tons of depth at cornerback, and just add to it if they bring him in. Uh, here's another Dolphins Wire uh, article: Personnel changing stands out at Dolphins camp. <clears throat> so I guess they're mixing things up um, for day. They mixed things up today. Um, changed up some personnel and some groupings and stuff like that. Um, so let's see. After being off, uh, or after being, are off the last two days after their preseason opener against the Buccaneers, the Dolphins were back on the practice field Sunday morning. During 11 on 11 drills, there were some noticeable personnel changes. Although Tory McTire and Cordray Tankersley have been seesawing between the starting cornerback spot opposite Xavier Howard. But Bobby McCain was the Dolphins' starting boundary cornerback with the first-team defense. Also, Minka Fitzpatrick was the starting slot cornerback, as he was in the secondary with safeties T.J. McDonald and Rashad Jones. Along with those changes, Jerome Baker was the starting outside linebacker when the Dolphins played their base 4-3 defense. Head coach Adam Gase said Dolphins defensive coordinator Matt Burke was unhappy with the way his unit played uh, against the Buccaneers on Thursday night. We are always going to be challenging guys, Gaze said about the changes on Sunday. Kept, uh, keep the competition alive. Make guys earn their job every day. With the Dolphins' defensive performance against the Buccaneers, it is no surprise the coaching staff decided to shake things up a bit. However, Fitzpatrick and Baker were some of the bright spots for the Dolphins, and Gaze probably wanted to get them more first-team reps because they both played so well. Other news and notes from Dolphins training camp on Sunday. Jason Sanders converted all eight of his field goals, including two 61-yard field goals. He certainly has the edge in the kicking competition at the moment. On a passing play during 11-on-11 drills, running back Kalen Balaj was supposed to block defensive end Charles Harris, but the running back let him go right past him for a sack on Ryan Tannehill. After the play, Tannehill kicked Balaj out of the huddle and then later chewed him out on the sideline. You can't kick the guy out of the huddle all the time, Gay said after practice. He was right today and would he did that would have been painful for him linebacker Mike Cole injured his MCL against the Buccaneers Gay said he did not have a timetable for his return it's gonna be a little bit of time Gay said <clears throat> speaking of injuries wide receiver Kenny Stills ankle defensive tackle Jordan Phillips shoulder defensive end William Hayes hamstring and center Jake Brendel calf all missed Sunday's practice uh, <clears throat> so uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, they definitely got to, you know, obviously keep things, um, 
I don't know, I guess you got to make sure that the competition is there. You got to make sure that every guy is coming out there every day, giving it his all. You got to find the best lineup, obviously, all of that stuff. Um, as far as those injuries go, I mean, I know most of them are just, um, you know, precautionary with William Hayes and, and, and stuff like that. Kenny Stills is obviously new on there. Um, Jordan Phillips is new on there, but I'm pretty sure, you know, hopefully, I mean, it doesn't seem like either of them are serious injuries, so, you know, it should work itself out. They're probably just being easy with them, make sure that they, you know, can make it through the preseason and get to the regular season. Uh, okay, so this next one, Bleacher Report article, Tannehill throws rookie out of huddle during practice, as we just heard a minute ago. Uh, Miami Dolphins quarterback Ryan Tannehill relied on some tough love for rookie running back Kalen Balazs. ESPN.com's Cameron Wolf reported Tannehill temporarily stopped practice and told Balazs to leave the team's huddle during practice after Balazs blew a blocking assignment. Wolf noted Balazs' mistake led to a sack for Dolphins defensive end Charles Harris. Dolphins head coach Adam Gase supported Tannehill's tactic. I, I would have been upset if I was him because he knows what the result in a game would have been. Gay said it would have been painful for him for sure he was in the right kind of making an example there when he does things like that for our offense it's a good thing yeah I mean you know Tannehill has to be able to take care or I'm sorry take control of the entire offense and the entire team really I mean he is the the you know face of the franchise the team leader on the field he's got to be able to do things you know like that now obviously um you know you gotta you do gotta always try and handle things properly um he obviously felt like in that moment you know he needed to really impress upon him and you know so he did what he had to do but i, I like how he is you know showing throughout the entire preseason and training camp you know otas everything you know he really is showing a, a you know control and command of things Tannehill's torn ACL may have been at the front, forefront of his mind when he saw Harris bearing down on him in the pocket. The 30-year-old passer missed the entire 2017 season after undergoing reconstructive surgery on his left knee. I don't know that he was really thinking about that necessarily. It was probably just that he understands, like Gay said, that it would have been a sack in a game, you know, it would have been a problem, and, I mean, he's got to be on it. He is a rookie. Obviously, he's going to make his mistakes, but, um... You know, and, and they weren't entirely happy with how things went on uh, Thursday night all around. So, you know, they want to they wanna make sure that they get those things cleaned up. Uh, the Dolphins selected Balazs in the fourth round of the 2018 draft. Offensive coordinator Dow Loggins praised his work on the practice field in June, even highlighting his pass blocking. The obvious thing is what you guys see, Loggins said of Balazs for the Palm Beach Post Joe Shad. When he walks through the door, you draw them up like that. He's big, he's good in protection, can catch the ball, can be a matchup issue in the passing game. Apparently, only it, ta it only takes one gaffe to draw the ire of Tannehill, though, and it's doubtful Balazs will make the same mistake. Yeah, I mean, well, and that's the point, is, is making sure that, you know, he learns from it, he grows, he develops, and, you know, what better way than to, to shock the system a little bit, you know? So, hopefully he does, hopefully he, he, he takes that, he will, I'm not too worried about it, it is what it is, you know? Uh, okay, so this next one from Dolphins Wire. Dolphins move Mika Fitzpatrick to slot cornerback spot during Sunday's practice. Which, by the way, real quick before I read this, you know, I do want to say that they have been talking about, um, you know, mixing up things on the defense a lot. And they did talk about actually having, at one point, utilizing all three of their safeties on the field, which would mean that. You know, it's possible Minka could go down into the slot while you have TJ and. Um, uh, Rashad Jones on the field at the same time in the back um, so I mean I wouldn't read too much into this I would say that it's just preseason um, you know as as it has been um, and they're you know mixing things up they're changing up they're throwing people all over the place they're finding out exactly what it is that's going to be the best for them you know, going into the season. So I wouldn't read too much into the, the shakeups. Obviously, they weren't totally satisfied with how things went Thursday night. You know, they're um, at least considering bringing in Bashad Breeland. But I, like I said, I wouldn't worry too much about it for, for the Dolph you know, all the Dolphins fans out there. Don't get like 
worried and concerned because oh man you know the first practice after the last game they you know they weren't they weren't um you know they weren't satisfied so they're changing things up in desperation or anything like that uh, come on man i mean if anybody feels that way just calm yourself everything's okay <laughs> we've only done one preseason game the starters only played a short period of time anyway so let's just see how things go uh, it's not it's not it's nowhere near time to start getting you know upset and worried uh, when he was in college at University of Alabama Mika Fitzpatrick played a hybrid cornerback position called star when the Dolphins drafted Fitzpatrick in April they wanted him to play as a safety but that changed during Sunday's practice the Dolphins moved Fitzpatrick to their slot cornerback position as they had Bobby McCain as their boundary cornerback position Zavian opposite Xavier Howard the Dolphins have been hoping either Cordray Tankersley or Tory McTire would emerge as the clear starting cornerback, but that has not happened. When asked about which position he preferred, Fitzpatrick said it doesn't matter to him. I feel comfortable at both, Fitz Fitzpatrick said after Sunday's practice. Excuse me. At Bama, I moved all around. Here they give me reps all over the place. We all do a good job of just learning the system so we can be interchangeable, can be versatile. It adds value to our defense. It gives a benefit to our defense. It's another plus. With the questions at the other cornerback position, the Dolphins have been linked to Bashad Breland, who visited with the team on Sunday. They also could decide to put McCain at the starting boundary corner spot full-time while having Fitzpatrick at the slot, which would put their top five defensive backs on the field at the same time. In his preseason opener against the Buccaneers, Fitzpatrick recorded three tackles and a pass breakup as well. While he was satisfied with his performance, Fitzpatrick said there are always things he can improve on. It was about what I expected, Fitzpatrick said. I, uh, I was out there doing it, so I kind of knew what to expect. I see a lot. There's some things I could have done better, obviously. That's every game. I was pretty happy with my performance, but there's always room for improvement, always things I could be working on. You know? And it's my opinion, obviously I'm not the coaching staff, you know, I'm not there, I don't have an insider view, but it's my opinion that Bobby McCain will end up being the slot cornerback, the starting slot cornerback, and I'm not saying that they couldn't, you know, change things up, There's, I'm not saying that he won't get reps on the outside ever, or Minka won't ever get reps in the slot, but I think that generally speaking that is how it's going to end up being, so... I don't know. I mean, it'll definitely be interesting to see. We have our next game on Friday uh, against Carolina, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, here's another article from Dolphins Wire. McCain comfortable with playing on the outside. During the first 11 days of training camp practice, Torrey McTire and Cordray Tankersley each started five times opposite Xavier Howard with Tony Lippett starting once. But McTire, Tankersley, or Lippett did not start on the other side of Howard during Sunday's uh practice. Bobby McCain, who usually starts at the slot cornerback position, moved to the boundary cornerback spot. Uh, McTire, Tankersley, and Lippitt have all been competing for the starting role, but none of the players have separated themselves. The Dolphins possibly wanted to see if McCain could play on the outside just in case they need him, or they maybe wanted to get the first round pick Mika Fitzpatrick on the field more with their first team to have their best secondary players on the field all at once. Either way, McCain says he is comfortable playing on the outside if the team needs him to. We have guys that can play a lot of spots, myself included. Minka, Rashad, TJ, Xavier, McCain said after practice, everybody can play everywhere and that's what they, they want us to learn everything at the end of the day. I'm cool with that. I can play all three spots, safety, nickel, corner. Wherever I need to plug and play, I can do it. After starting in 11 games a season ago, Tankersley has been a disappointment throughout training camp. The starting cornerback job was his to lose entering training camp, and at the moment, Tankersley has indeed lost it. That's why the Dolphins have rotated a number of players at the position opposite Howard. Now, hold on. I don't know exactly what Dolphins Wire knows, but I'm pretty sure that they don't have the kind of inside knowledge to say that for certain. I'm pretty sure they're making a declarative statement there that is a little bit more declarative than it should be. They're obviously going to mix things up, and sure, they may not be, you know, satisfied with Tank, Lip, and, and McTire, you know, and they do want to try and get their best guys on the field and, and stuff like that, but, and they, they do want to make sure that there's versatility amongst that group, but I wouldn't necessarily say that uh, you know, Tankersley or anybody has in, indeed lost it. I mean, it's training camp, man. Come on, let's not, let's not. All I'm saying is, is that we shouldn't just be jumping to conclusions, and we shouldn't even necessarily, um, you know, 
read too much into the way guys are lining up right now, the way depth charts uh, play out. I mean, obviously, you know, Gesicki was listed fifth on the depth chart, and he started in Thursday's game. So everybody just, you know, I'm going to bring you all this information, but let's not read too far into it. This is just how things are progressing, you know, day in, day out. The way it is today, it'll be different tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Let's just wait and see how things go. With putting McCain on the outside, the Dolphins are sending a message to McTire, Tankersley, and Lippitt as they want to get the best 11 players on the field at all times. Also, now, the Dolphins brought in free agent cornerback Rashad Breland for a visit on Sunday. We're just going to keep competing, head coach Adam Gay said. I think that's something that Bobby, he's the one guy that's <clears throat> able to do that. He can give those receivers fits because he's aggressive at the line of scrimmage. He can run with them, and he can get his hands on the ball. He's very aware of concepts, which gives him an advantage over a lot of corners. So, I mean, you know, like I said, it is what it is. Um, I wouldn't get too crazy with it. Um, but, you know, I, I mean... I don't know guys like I said it's just it's 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 far too early to say anything definitively we really gotta wait and see we gotta let the coaches you know do what they do we gotta we gotta have some you know I mean especially at this point of the year at this time of the year you really just gotta let them um, you gotta let them do what they do man you, you gotta have some faith in uh, you know the coaching staff and you got to believe that they are going to always be trying to you know figure out what's best and like I said I mean right now in training camp in the preseason there's gonna be a lot of moving parts a lot, there's still 90 guys on the roster so obviously things are gonna be shook up a lot um, anyway so uh, let's see we have a, a couple more articles I have a couple more articles for you um, these ones come from uh, Dolphins.com. Uh, so this first one is John Kinjemi. It's his three takeaways from the team's return to the field today. Um, so defensive adjustments is number one. Training camp is a time where you like to experiment with moving personnel around to different positions. After watching the first preseason pre game in 12 practices, defensive coordinator Matt Burke wanted to see how Bobby McCain looked at the boundary corner position, shifting rookie Minka Fitzpatrick inside to the nickel corner spot. The defense is still searching for someone to emerge opposite Xavier Howard with Torrey McTire, Cordray Tankersley, and others needing to play and show with more consistency. The coaching staff has seen multiple combinations and will continue to give players the chance to prove they belong on the field. Friday night against Carolina is the next challenge where someone needs to take advantage of their play snaps and show more consistency. Number two, interior line work. The shoulder pads were back on and that meant the offensive and defensive linemen were back at it. The big guys up front were working on blocking and trying to get off those blocks. It was three on three half line uh, inside drills and after watching the preseason game against the Bucks, the staff must have felt this group needed additional repetitions along the line of scrimmage. They also focused on blitz pickup later in the workout, adding the running backs and tight ends into the mix. Number three, end of game situations. The Dolphins have focused on ample amount of time this training camp on end of half and game situations. Today's scenario was end of game with the first team units on both sides of the ball going head to head. The offense is down by two points, zero timeouts left, and only 26 seconds left in the game facing a third and seven. After an incompletion on third down, place kicker Jason Sanders trotted onto the field to attempt a 61-yard field goal. Sanders drilled the kick through the uprights and took advantage of his opportunity under pressure, and that was good to see. So, man, you know, I mean, we're, we're making progress, little at a time. Like I said, it's right now, I mean... <clears throat> You know, we, we've been having these discussions and everything, and I feel like it really is, you know, at, at this point, it's kind of just getting all repetitive, you know, with, with the cornerback battles, with the backup quarterback battle, blah, 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 you know, and I think right now, throughout the remainder of the preseason, we really just have to, to wait and see, you know, and, and <clears throat> it is interesting, obviously, um, with the changes, but... It's just, it's so difficult to really read into, you know, what's happening. Now, you know, I mean, it's all, obviously all for a reason, and it could be as, you know, simple and benign as, um, 
you know, just getting guys reps at places, just changing it up, trying to get versatility, all that stuff. Or it could be that they were really seriously unsatisfied with certain things and they, they're, you know, trying to, to figure it out. But I think it'll all shake out. And I think, you know, going into the first real game of the season against the Titans, I think it'll all shake out. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. <clears throat> okay, so here's this next one from Alan Pupar at NFL.com. Camp Insider, 19 observations from Sunday's practice. <clears throat> one, the Dolphins practice in shoulder pads Sunday. Next, linebacker Mike Hole, knee, defensive tackle Jordan Phillips, shoulder, and wide receiver Kenny Stills, ankle, did not practice Sunday. They joined defensive end William Hayes, hamstring, and offensive line lineman Jake Brendel on the list of injured players. I know William Hayes and Jake Brendel are definitely just... Uh, precautionary. Mike Hall is going to be out for the next few weeks for sure because he has his MCL sprain. Jordan Phillips and Kenny Stills are probably just precautionary as well. I mean, they're usually both pretty good. They both, you know, from what I've seen, they've both been pretty good, um, you know, at battling through injuries and, and dealing with stuff. So, and the coaching staff is really good about you know, uh, handling those things too. And they, they definitely tend to lean on the side of caution and, you know, hold guys out just to make sure, you know, I mean, so I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Uh, next cornerback, Tony Lippett was back at practice after sitting out the preseason opener against Tampa Bay because of a lower leg injury he sustained last week. So that's good. He's back. Wide receiver Isaiah Ford did not wear the red non-contact jersey at practice for the first time in a week. So that's good. So they're getting healthier. Um, rookie third round pick Jerome Baker lined up at linebacker with the first team defense. Bobby McCain lined up as a boundary cornerback with the first team defense. Defensive end Charles Harris got to Ryan Tannehill for what would have been a sack in team drills. Brock Osweiler had a nice scramble in team drills. Players who fielded punts during a special teams drill were Jakeem Grant, Danny Amendola, and Drew Morgan. Rookie seventh round pick Jason Sanders handled the kicking duties Sunday. He was 8 for 8 on field goal attempts, including 2 from 61 yards. First round pick Mika Fitzpatrick lined up at nickel cornerback alongside safeties Rashad Jones and TJ McDonald. See, and that's, you know, obviously today they have, th today was the first time that they actually, from my understanding, I mean, obviously the media wasn't even at all the practices, but um, from my understanding, this is actually the first time where they've had significant reps with all three of the safeties on the field. Um, and they did say they were going to, you know, experiment and play with that. So, you know, there is that. Uh, cornerback Xavier Howard had a nice pass breakup against about Dave Parker near the sideline. Running back Frank Gore had a nice run up the middle and followed that with a tough catch on a swing pass near the sideline. Defensive end Cameron Malveaux batted down a pass at the line of scrimmage. Dolphins rookies had the team logo on their helmets for the first time in camp. Nice. Safety Trey Elston had a nice interception when he stepped in front of uh, intended receiver Francis Owusu near the sideline down the field. Cameron Wake had a would-be sack in team drills. Vincent Taylor excuse me, broke through the line of scrimmage to meet running back Sonoris Perry in the backfield on a running play. Vincent Taylor has been stepping up a lot. I think our D-line is going to be, you know, a lot better than what people are giving it credit for when it comes down to it. Um, okay, so, and <clears throat> here is the final article that I have for you uh, from Alan Pupar. Uh, as well on it from dolphins.com top news two rookies work with first team defense so it is going to be a little redundant though obviously the dolphins defense had a different look at practice and rookies jerome baker and minka fitzpatrick both worked with the first team defense baker lined up alongside kiko alonzo and raekwon mcmillan at linebacker with the first team defense while fitzpatrick worked as the first team nickel corner i think uh baker in my opinion was one of the um, definite highlights of the defense on Thursday night. He was flying around. He was all over the place. He was making plays. And I think he's, you know, going to prove to be a significant asset for us. Fitzpatrick downplayed the significance of the events, pointing out the Dolphins have been looking at different players with different groupings throughout training camp, as I've said. I don't know if it was too much of a promotion, Fitzpatrick said. I've been rotating in and out with the ones. We're just trying different guys at different spots to try and get the best guys on the field. Not too much has changed from last week. Like I said, we're just trying different things. Baker didn't start in the preseason opener against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Thursday, but came in very early to replace Kiko Alonso as one of the best or it was one of the bright spots for the Dolphins' defense. 
In fact, head coach Adam Gase singled out his performance among the things that stood out for him on defense. He made plays, Gase said. That's all we're looking for guys to do is to get lined up, be in the right spots, find the ball, and make plays. That's it. Baker, for his part, said his focus was on looking ahead. It was very exciting, he said about practice Sunday. Today was just a day to switch it up and go with the ones. But I'm really just focused on getting better every day. It's a blessing just to be out here. Uh, McCain on the outside. Another change on defense had nickel cornerback uh, Bobby McCain starting on the boundary opposite Xavier Howard. McCain said it was just a matter of giving players looks at different spots and trying to take advantage of the flexibility of some of the secondary members. We have guys that can play a lot of spots, myself included, Minka, Rashad, TJ, and Xavier. McCain said, everybody can play everywhere and that's what they, they want us to learn everything at the end of the day. I'm cool with that. I can play all three spots, safety, nickel, corner. Wherever I need to plug and play, I can do it. McCain is one of four players who have worked with the first team opposite Howard, along with Cordray Tankersley, Tori McTire, and Tony Lippett. Gay said McCain's ability to play outside just gives the team one more option. Really, it's about getting our best 11 on the field, Gay said. If that's McCain starting outside, what it is, that's what it is. Um, we're just going to keep competing. I think that's something that Bobby, he's the one guy that's able to do that. He can give those receivers fits because he's aggressive at the line of scrimmage. He can run with them and he can get his hands on the ball. He's very aware of concepts which gives him an advantage over a lot of corners. Uh, Gasicki blocks out critics. Rookie second round pick Mike Gasicki's blocking reminds, reminds a focal, remains a focal point among media members, but the tight end from Penn State keeps making strides. He has progressed in practice and did a solid job against Tampa Bay against veteran defensive end Jason Pierre Paul, which is actually pretty impressive and, and shows his progress because Jason Pierre Paul is a good, um, you know, a good edge rusher. Not that Gesicki wants to make a big deal about it. That's the expectation, Gesicki said. It's not like, oh my god, Mike blocked somebody. I know that that's what everybody thinks, but that's not what it is. When I'm out there, that's the expectation. I'm not going to turn around and let somebody run free. That's my job, and whether I'm catching a fade or blocking a defensive end, that's my job, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Gay said he likes what he's seen from Gesicki in that department. I'm always killing him on it anyways. Just a reminder of what everybody thought, Gay said. The thing that I really appreciate about Mike is he wants to do it. He wants to get better at blocking and he doesn't want to be a receiver, just a receiver. I see him go out there and he tries to do it and he'll get crushed a couple times, but you don't see him shy away from it the next time. I've seen tight ends in the past that when that happens, they don't want any part of it because they don't want to be embarrassed. He just lines right back up and does it again. So we'll keep getting better in that area. I like that he's embracing it and he wants to be able to be left on the field. He doesn't want to get taken out and everybody says what you guys think, which is when he goes out onto the field, it's pass. <clears throat> Injury update. The Dolphins still don't know the extent of the knee injury sustained by Mike Hull in the preseason opener Thursday, but Gay said the third-year linebacker would be out a little bit. Hull was among five players to sit out practice Sunday. Another was wide receiver Kenny Stills, though Gay said the team was just being extra careful to make sure his ankle injury didn't linger or have a setback. Also sitting out Sunday were defensive tackle Jordan Phillips, defensive end William Hayes, and offensive lineman Jake Brendel. Uh, practice report. The Dolphins practice in shoulder pads Sunday. Cornerback Tony Lippett was back in practice after sitting out the preseason opener against Tampa Bay because of a lower leg injury he sustained last week. Wide receiver Isaiah Ford did not wear the red non-contact jersey at practice for the first time in a week. Defensive end Charles Harris got to Ryan Tannehill for what would have been a sack in team drills. Brock Osweiler had a nice scramble in team drills. Rookie seventh round pick Jason Sanders handled the kicking duties Sunday. He was 8 for 8 on the field goal on field goal attempts including 2 from 61 yards. Cornerback Xavier Howard had a nice pass breakup against Devontae Parker near the sideline. Running back Frank Gore had a nice run up the middle and followed that with a tough catch on a swing pass near the sideline. Defensive end Cameron Malveaux batted down a pass at the line of scrimmage. Safety Trey Elston had a nice interception when he stepped in front of intended wide receiver Francis Owusu near the, the sideline down the field. Cameron Wake had a would-be sack in team drills. Vincent Taylor broke through the line of scrimmage to meet running back Sonoris Perry in the backfield on a running play. Uh, special guests. The crowd at practice Sunday included three special groups. Members of the Football Un Unites Captains Program, military veterans, and season ticket holders. The Football Unites Captains Program, a diversity and inclusion initiative that will bring 80 to 100 middle school students from various backgrounds together once a month for a day of learning about tolerance, acceptance, and leadership was unveiled Sunday. Dolphins players and alumni, real quick, see, I mean, the Dolphins do so much in their community, it's, it's crazy. 
Dolphins players and, and alumni will join these students to share their stories, perspectives, and experiences. The Ross Initiative in Sports for Equality is RISE. That's what it stands for. The Ross Initiative in Sports for Equality, RISE, will assist with programming and program evaluation. Veteran attended practice as the Dolphins had a military appreciation day. Today is awesome, said Richard Bryan, outreach coordinator for the West Palm Beach uh, VA Medical Center. Whether you want to believe it or not, a lot of these veterans look at these players and these coaches as their hero. They look up to them. Uh, this gives them that opportunity to maybe let their guard down. Maybe some of these guys and gals are not in a good way or are struggling with whatever. This opportunity here presents for them to come down, let their guard down, enjoy the game of football, maybe even get to meet a player or get up close. They're not always comfortable talking to just anyone, but here, whether they're talking to another veteran or if they get the opportunity to talk to a player, it really allows them to drop their guard and just relax and enjoy. All right, Dolphins, so... <clears throat> Um, that's it. That's going to be, uh, your episode of Dolphins with Dylan. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope it was insightful. I hope it was informative. Um, hopefully it didn't get anybody too crazy or too paranoid or worried or concerned. There's going to be changes, uh, plenty of them for the next couple weeks. You know, wait till things shake out and get down to the 53. Um, but there are, <clears throat> there are a lot of positives, a lot of good things to work on, to build on, and stuff like that. So let's keep it, you know, let's keep it going. <clears throat> uh, we have our next game on Friday against uh, the Carolina Panthers. So let's get ready and excited for that. Uh, and obviously for the rest of this week, I'll be bringing you any relevant and new information, um, you know, whenever they have practices, so on and so forth. Uh, with that, <clears throat> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to have some... Uh, I'm gonna have the interviews at the end of this video like I normally do uh, so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoy the videos uh, and I will see you guys soon I mean when you turn on the film you sort of see four uh, defensive linemen flying off the tape in the backfield re right <laughs> Raising hell, and then you know when the ball's thrown, you see uh, four D linemen turning, playing, and just getting out the stack and trying to trying to get to the ball here, whatever it takes, man. That's the mentality we have in our have in our room, and then that's what we got to have on the uh, field on Sundays, whatever it takes to uh, get the ball carried down or the QB down. It does seem like we've seen a lot of that the last few weeks overall out here. You guys have been, you guys have looked pretty dominant as a unit. What's the confidence level? right now across the board in the defensive line? Oh, the confidence is high, man. It's just, you know, just going out and doing it under the uh, big lights. You know, uh, like I said, we're a little flat the first week. So, that, I mean, that's something we focused on. We got the tape cleaned up, came out here, show what we're, we're about. But we just got to show, you know, when we when we have another opponent in front of us. As a veteran, what do you get the most out of training camp? Oh, man, just just working your technique, just trying to, you know, work on something better because, you know, every day is something new. I mean, football, you're never going to be perfect. So if it's hands, it's technique, or it's just uh, getting in better condition. Was Chris upset, would you say, after the first game with the group? Oh, I wouldn't say upset, just, you know, disappointed. And guys, guys, you know, they saw the tape for themselves and they were disappointed in themselves. And obviously, we all want to play better. So, you know, we came out, practice. That was our mentality to go hard, get our, get our tails to the ball, and, uh, and that's how it's supposed to look. Um, uh, son, I want. I keep wanting to say Sundays, <laughs> but you know, whenever we got another <laughs> opponent in front of us. Yeah. Hey, when you guys are, you guys want to rotate guys to keep guys fresh. Is it hard to get a, a, a unit out there, like you know, get everybody together on the same page when you rotate? Oh uh, no, I mean just you know, when the offense is going fast, then you know you're not going to get that rotation. But you know, hey. If, if we're uh, on our details as a defense, you know, we're three and out and people, then, hey, next group in, you know, when we start the next series, or, hey, you know, they got us on a long series, okay, we go four or five plays, next group in, you know, next ball stop. So, you know, it's just something we got to keep working on. That's what training camps for. We just got to keep getting better. I know you, you probably don't, I don't know if you know a lot about last season uh, defensive line, but Devon said you, they didn't really attack like you guys were supposed to attack this year. How different is it going to look? Oh, man, I mean, uh, you just got to keep watching the tape, man, and just keep coming out to practice. And, you know, uh, this week we definitely want to go out and show that attack mentality, not just me, just the whole D-line as a unit, and, and we'll show you what it looks like, man.
we saw a few changes to the defense out there today, the first team. Um, exciting for you guys? Can you talk about what it feels like to have those? Yeah, teams? definitely. Just uh, just shuffling the reps up, you know, at the end of the day, because everybody's got to, at the end of the day, everybody's going to be needed um, during the season, you know, regardless if it's at corner, regardless of the safety, uh, I might have to be the holder in the middle of the season. You never know. So just being able to do everything is uh, is, is good for you and keep you around. What was uh, what kind of feedback did the, the defense get from, from the, the first preseason game? Well, you know, we got things to clean up. We can be better. We can be better. We did some really good things. And we did some things not so good. At the end of the day, it's the first preseason game is expected. And, uh, you know, now we can go. Now we have a starting point to know where we're starting and, and, and what we, where we have to get and just keep climbing every day. Each and every day, come out and work and do our job, and it'll fall in place for us. When you're at outside corner, what's something that you have to keep in mind as a point of emphasis or a key that's a little different than the inside? Um, just, you know, it's football. So I like to think I know the game a little bit. So, you know, just just playing with – um. Just getting you, just being consistent in what we're doing. Like, like I always preach it, man. Consistency is key, and uh, consistency will keep you around. So, you being consistent and uh, you know breaking balls up, doing the right things, playing the right calls. You know, at the end of the day, it'll, it'll like I said, balls will fall into your lap. When you're on the boundary, you can kind of use the sideline as a defender. When you're in the middle, you got to navigate a lot of traffic. Yeah. Tell me the, the intricacies of, of each position and what you. Oh, uh, well, outside, is a lot more running, and uh, <laughs> you do a lot more running. But you know, it's a. Uh, you know, inside you have to be more of a navigator, more of a uh, facilitator. I guess you could say more of a uh, an extra coach on the field, just getting the guys, getting the guys in the right position and making calls. Outside you just have you got to line up and play football. You know, it's gonna be some dogs out there. There's gonna be some dogs inside at the end of the day. So, like I said, being being able, my bad, being able to be flexible and uh, just get the job done. At the end of the day, that's that's what I like to pride myself on. If I can get the job done, I'm gonna get it done. What do you know about Deshaun Breeland? I guess he's coming in for a Breeland. He's coming in for a visit. What do you know about him? I know he's a good player. He's a good player. You know, he's really good. He's pretty good with the Redskins, and uh, I'm. I'm I've watched him over a couple of years, and um, you know I, I know I know he's made some plays. At the end of the day, you know that's I, and I, I can only focus on myself. And uh, but I know he's a good player, and uh, whatever you know I, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not really I don't know him well, you know enough to say I know him. So I don't. Yeah. Hey Bobby, what, what needs to get cleaned up? I know you guys didn't play a lot to start and stuff, but what needs to, the numbers that Tampa Bay put up in that scrimmage aren't acceptable, right? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, at the end of the day, even old guys, young guys, no matter who's in the game, first quarter, fourth quarter, like we can't lose the game like that at the end of the game, and we can't start off the game like that the way we started. So, uh, like I said, we got things to clean up, and there, there's things just to, you know, with energy, attitude, just bringing it to the defense, and um, we won't have it this next week. What needs to improve with you guys at the linebacker position after you see the first game? Um, I think just we need to uh, treat practice more like games, uh, get ready for that um, mentality. It's a different mentality when you go out there. Um, for the most part, just technique stuff and uh, and just get more in shape and getting better for the game. It's funny you mentioned that. I was just thinking watching practice. Like mm -hmm. How do you go full speed when you really – you know what I mean? When you really can't, you know what I mean? I mean, you just got to mentally tell yourself, you know, I mean, uh, we got to take leadership and uh, get everyone going, kind of make it something fun, you know, not something where everyone's just dragging. Just make it where uh, we want to get to the ball and, and uh, just run around. I mean, the technique has to be there, right? But, right. But, like, you can't actually really, you're not going to unload and practice on a guy, you know? Like, right, so, right. So how do you how do you do it? Uh, like you said, like with tackling, um, we just got to square them up, you know, get a little thud and let them run. Um, and that'll that'll carry over into games rather than just going by and touching the hip and just saying I would have got him. The, the D lineman said they're going to be more in attack mode this season. It's yeah, they look a little different. Have you noticed that? And what's going to be the difference? Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're just they're getting off the ball. I mean, all those guys up front. I mean, they make our jobs a lot easier. So uh, them being uh, the beast they are, I mean, it's going to help us play better. How about the rotation when, they, when you got guys rotating up front? What does that do for a defense and for you guys? That keeps fresh legs and uh, all the time. You know. Um, Long drives. I mean, those those guys can get tired. So it's just having having rotation there. I mean, it helps helps everyone. How much more are you looking forward to the second game? I know you play a lot anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I feel like I got a lot to prove. Uh, I feel like our whole defense has a lot to prove. I feel like we didn't really show uh, who we were that first game, and I think we uh, we can come out there and and prove it Friday. Mike, will you go back and watch every play from Thursday that you've locked on? Will you do it yourself? Will you do it with Shane Day? Oh, yeah, we already went back, watched the whole tape. Uh, you know, we go back as a, as a tight end unit. We go back, watch the whole film. 
whether you're in or not, you know, you're kind of grading it as if as if it's your play. So yeah, and encouraged by how you, I know you just addressed it somewhat, but encouraged by how you blocked the other night. Oh uh, yeah, I mean that's the expectation. You know, it's not yeah. it's not like oh my god, you know, Mike blocked somebody. <laughs> I mean, I know that that's what everybody thinks, but um, that's that, that, that's not what it is. You know, so when I, when I'm out there, that's the expectation. It's not I'm gonna you know turn around and you know let somebody run free. Uh, so that's my job, and whether I'm you know catching a fade or whether I'm blocking the defensive end, that's my job, and I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. Does that Mike, add some fuel to your fire? Uh, I mean, no, I, I think in the in the past, you know, when I was younger, I used to use all the outside stuff as motivation, but it doesn't mean anything. You know, all that matters is, you know, what's in the Dolphins locker room and, you know, the coaches and the players in there and everything else. You know, people want to write stuff, talk about stuff. I mean, it's just, it's pointless. Like, it seems like every time there's a, a good receiving tight end, they, that's what they talk about. Blocking. Yeah. Is it physical? Is it is it a mental? Is it technique? You know, a lot of it is you? technique. Uh, if you got the right mindset, you have the right mentality, a lot of it is technique and just getting the reps in. Uh, you know, getting your hands inside, punch, getting off the ball. Um, you know, it's not it's it's not as much as you know as people want to look into it and think it's more than it is when it's just technique and uh, you know the want to. It looks like you've received a promotion partly because of that. Um, how, how do you feel being out there with the first team today? Um, I don't know if it's too much of a promotion. Uh, I've been I've been rotating in and out with the ones. Uh, we're just trying different guys at different spots, uh, just trying to get the best guys on the field. Um, not too much to change from last week. Um, and, you know, like I said, we're just trying different things. And you feel comfortable at, at both slot and safety, or is there one that you feel more comfortable at? No, I feel comfortable at both. You know, I've been my day. I've moved all around. Uh, here they give me reps all over the place. So, uh, you know, I just do it. We all do a good job of just uh, learning the system so we can be interchangeable, can be versatile. It adds uh, value to our defense. Um, it, it gives a, ben, uh, a, ben, a benefit uh, to our defense. So, you know, it's just, just another plus. What are, what are some of the uh, keys when you're at that specific position, the inside corner position? Um, that is just you got to know what everybody's doing around you because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a difficult position to play because in you know, that corner, you kind of have the sideline as a friend. Uh, at the nickel spot, you have, you have nothing out there. It's just you're literally on the island out there uh, in the middle of the field. Um, so you got to know who, where's your help at, uh, who's doing what, uh, who's doing what assignment. So I just got to know the concept of the defense rather than just your position, uh, which, which, I mean, not, since I was playing safety uh, and a little bit of the dime, I kind of understand uh, what everybody's doing around me, so it helps me when I play that nickel spot. Nick, I haven't said all that when you go back and look at film. Was it what you expected or better, worse? What did you think uh, about the film about, of the game? Tomorrow, my performance? Yeah. Um, it was about what I expected. I mean, because I, I was out there doing it, so I kind of knew what to expect. I see, uh, so I see a lot when, when I play. Um, you know, there's some things I could have done better. Obviously, it's every game. Um, you know, I, I was pretty happy with my performance. But like I said, there's always room for improvement. Always things I could be working on. Do you know those things on the spot already? Like when you're out, you seem pretty comfortable. You seem pretty. Oh, yeah, there's some. There's sometimes where you just like you kind of look to the sideline, waiting for the coach to say something to you. But they might catch it, might not catch it at the time. But uh, they'll, they'll definitely catch it on film. It's, it's by one instance uh, this this past week when that happened. But um, you know, when you understand the defense, you understand the concept. Um, you kind of know what you did wrong. Uh, and then sometimes, of course, I'm still learning. Uh, just sometimes I'll mess up and I just, I want the, the vets will kind of be like, you know, you could have triggered faster, you could have done this uh, better. Uh, and I'll just, I'll take it, learn from it, and apply it the next time. Oh, so have you set like personal goals at the intervals of camp and by the second preseason game, the third preseason game, on where you want to be? Um, for, the, for, this, for this camp and, and all the way up to the, to the first, first game, uh, my goal was just to learn, learn the defense, understand the defense, so I go out there and play fast. And then with that, just uh, establish myself as, as, a, as a, a great player on this team, as a dominant player on this team, with, uh, a player that, a young player that the older guys can rely on just to do their job. You know, that when I'm out there, they don't have to worry about me. Uh, they'll know that I, I do what I got to do. And I just do that by trying to communicate with, with them uh, so they understand where, where my mind is at and uh, they know that I can do my job. What's the biggest challenge you face thus far? Um, I'll just say just, this, this is the next level. So, you know, things come at you a little bit faster. Uh, things are a little bit different. So it's just learning the small thing. Um, I don't think it's been uh, extremely challenging, but it has been challenging. Uh, you know, I've been trying to find new ways to challenge myself. And, uh, you know, moving around is, is difficult, especially when you're learning the system. So I'll probably say that right there, just, um, just moving around to different positions while trying to learn the defense. Because uh, I didn't really move around a whole lot until uh, – I learned the whole system at Bama, mm -hmm. and then I started moving around here. As soon as I got here, <laughs> I was hopping around. So, you know, it was difficult, but you know, that kind of helped me in the long run. They threw in the deep end quickly. Yes, sir. <laughs>
So of course. Yeah, so what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, no, it's, it's camp. It's supposed to happen. You know, it's switch up. We got to see what guys can play, see what guys can do, see what guys can learn. That's what it's about. We got to be able to play all three. That's how'd you all. feel? How'd you feel you played Thursday? Um, short time, but uh, I feel like I did some good things. I did my job, and um, you know, obviously, you know, we got some things we need to work on as a group, and um, that's why we're out here today. What have you thought of the the young players out there, uh, Minka and Jerome Baker? Ooh, two two good ones, two good ones, fast man. Minka, the first thing that jumps off, man, is knowledge. He understands the game, man, and and Baker just goes, baby. He's fast, he's twitchy, man, and he make plays. And that's what it's about, man. I tell them all the time. If you don't do anything else, man, just make plays. That's it. Wrong or right. Was Jerome at strong side when, when he was out there today or, or weeks ago? Uh, I'm not real sure. I'm not real sure. It's not for me to compliment on. So, like I said, it's for you guys to figure out. <laughs> and you guys were in uh, college. I know we got uh, uh, Tank is here and then Bashad, right? You, you all played together, right? Uh, no doubt. No what, doubt. What are, Branch was on that team, too. And Branch. Okay. Yeah. What, what are, what's Bashad's strength? Uh, now, bring it off physical corner. Get up in your face, man, and he has the absolute attitude to play the game. No question about it. He's a corner. He, he's aggressive in the run game, and he wants to get hands on. He's a good player, no doubt. Have it's you about, uh, texted with him at all about his visit here? Uh, I haven't. I haven't. I'm pretty sure I got a text on my phone now with him coming to town today. Some hey, <laughs> Stefan, hey, a lot's been made about the defensive line rotating. Right. Can that work at other positions, rotating? Like, let's say uh, it, it, just, it depends on what guys can handle, honestly. You know, what what type of shape guys are in and how much guys know, how, what the workload is going to be for that week. And if that guy can handle it, we'll, we'll leave him in there. If he can't, we'll rotate and get him some help. Adam, we saw Vlad, Jerome Baker with the first group day. What did you guys like about how he did Thursday? Made plays. I mean, that's all we're looking for guys to do is get lined up, be in the right spots, and find the ball and make plays. That's it. Adam or Mike Hall update? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't know the exact amount of time he's going to miss. I mean, but he's it's going to be a little bit. We're just we're still gathering information. You know how you know how that works. We think we have things diagnosed, and you know, is anything else going to come up? We just want to make sure that. We know every all the details of, you know, the injury. How have you seen uh, Ryan evolve in the area of holding teammates accountable? We kind of saw that today. I I, I think it it's, it can be difficult because you're you're trying to keep the tempo of practice, and you you can't kick a guy out of the huddle all the time. You can't shut it down all the time and and have Big discussions. I think it's it's a feel, timing. You know, when's the right time to be like, you know what, we're not we're not right here. We need somebody else in here. He was he was right today. That's what he did. I mean, I would have been upset if I was him because he knows the, what the result in the game would have been. That would it would have been painful for him for sure. So I, I think I think he was in the right. You know, you know, kind of making an example there. So you know when. When he when he does does things like that, I think for our offense that's that's a good thing. And we saw some uh, changes to both the base and the nickel first team defense. And I know nothing is set in stone, but when we see changes like that, is it is it more based off of the, the uh, preseason game or accumulation of you know OTAs? I think it's accumulation. Just you know, we're always going to be moving guys around and trying to figure out what's the best eleven. You know. Whether it be offense, defense, special teams, we're always going to be challenging guys, keep competition alive. You know, we need guys to, to win their job every day. When you, when you watch the tape of uh, the guys just for the day, uh, some guys you see, you know, watch the tape, particularly the defense, what did you see? Yeah, you know, there's, I mean, obviously, I thought Baker played pretty good. You know, we didn't have, we didn't play as well as we wanted to. I know Matt wasn't real happy, I know the coaching staff wasn't real happy. So, you know, we, you know, we need to have a better performance this next game. Adam, how is Minka developing throughout camp through the preseason? You had him with the first game today. I mean, he picks things up very quickly. The amount of time he, he puts in by himself is, is probably more than I've seen in a lot of players, especially a rookie. Uh, I mean, the guy's a relentless worker. And... 
that allows him to go out there play fast. I mean, he's just, he just has football savvy. You know, you can throw him in a lot of different situations. He understands, you know, what's going on. Probably a little bit of where he went to college, who trained him. So, I mean, he has, uh, you know, that combination allows him to come out here and, and do a lot of the things he does. Minka talked today a little about playing all those different positions that you guys have. Are you guys cognizant of how much is on his plate and when you put him where? Yeah. You know, that's always going to – it's really right now, it's like how much can he absorb? And then I'm sure at some point we're – you know, I can't give you an exact date when we say, okay, this is what we're going to do. You know, the more you can do, the better. You just never know what's going to happen in a game where when you have guys that can play multiple spots. That's why I've I always felt like Bobby was good for us because we had him at nickel, but he could always go outside. He, there was just a lot of jobs he could do. And, you know, at some point we'll probably get to be able to say, like, here's your two spots or here's your three spots that you're going to be working at majority of the season and then if we need you an emergency emergency role he's a, he knows what to do he he's heard those calls he's played those spots before you mentioned Bobby he plays an outside corner today is that something that you anticipate more of him going forward we're we're really i mean it's about getting our best 11 on the field if that's what it is that's what it is we're we're just going to keep competing and i think that's something that Bobby Bobby's the one guy that's able to do that and he can give those receivers fits because he's aggressive at the line of scrimmage. He can run with them. He can get his hands on the ball. He's very aware of concepts, which gives him an advantage over, you know, a lot of corners. Now, what would you assess was the issue with the first team defense in terms of how easily Tampa Bay was able to drive downfield? I mean, we just we, we were not good in just fundamental things. You know, getting our stances, getting aligned, making sure we're, you know, in the right gaps. I mean, we, we have to do a better job of that. That was such a point of emphasis from the start of camp. Didn't get it done. You know, that's where it was nice today to see when you get 20, 91 out there, all of a sudden things look a little different because those guys, you know, they they grab a hold of what's supposed to happen. And if somebody's not right, they make sure it's right. You know, you don't have to say much when those two guys are around. You know, that's where, you know, we need other guys to keep stepping up and, and and being able to do that if if they're not in there. I mean, we went 10 games without Rashad two years ago. You know, last year we were fortunate to where he was able to play every game. You know, we, we have to understand when one of those guys, is, they're not in there, somebody else has got to step up. Did you see him on Thursday? Like it was the first 14 plays of his NFL career. So, I mean, we got, we got to keep working. And, you know, we, we we expected it. You know, we he was he was pretty juiced up before the game. We just get now that's kinda done and now we're moving on to the next one this week. Just keep getting better and when we hit that game just play fast and make plays. With with Devontae, it's kinda hard to assess what's going on there because Xavier knocks down just about every pass thrown at him. Is that Xavier's really good, or is Devontae not running crisp enough? Right? I think I think Xavier's really good. I mean, he's a hard guy to throw against. I mean, it, it doesn't matter who's been on him. And all the receivers. I mean, he's he's playing situational football really, really well right now. You know, he had that last knockdown. He he was daring them to run by him. You know, it's not what I called. So I mean, it was, Devontae did what he was supposed to do. You know, and I thought I. It, it was unfortunate that he kind of like jammed his finger up there, you know, in the middle of that one period, because we, I finally felt like we were getting a little bit of a, a little bit of a rhythm there, to where we had some, you know, a lot of man coverage going on in that period, and then you know he had to duck out, which you know we still had a few plays left. Then he came back in, and we couldn't get him the ball as like we were, we kind of started to. How much of how Xavier played? I mean, when he plays six plays. I mean, he didn't play that many plays. I mean, I thought, you know, he uses the other hand on that, that ball from the sideline. He probably gets his finger on it. I mean, I was standing right there. That thing was as tight as you get. So, I mean, we're, I'm always going to encourage him to be aggressive because he has the ability to, to make if – a, if a guy does win on, on the line of scrimmage, he can catch up. You know, I, I just want him to play as aggressive as he does in practice. At, at what point do you get concerned about chemistry with Tannehill and, and Parker? I'm not concerned about that. 
those guys those guys have been doing this for a minute together you know we didn't have any problems in the spring you know it's just sometimes the the ball goes other places dictated by coverage you know we just I mean Devonte is the kind of guy you want man to man you want you want him to be able to use his size and his body and box a guy out and go get the ball and you know you need to see press coverage to get that and you know we've had some opportunities we haven't made some of those 50 50 you know balls haven't been completed but We'll just keep working on it, and I've seen it turn with those two guys before. Adam, was there significance or meaning to, to the, the rookies getting their, their on their helmet for the first time? In- well, they had to have them for the games. Oh, for the game. Actually. Yeah. There you go. That was it. Hey, that was the marker. Yeah, that's a lot of work for Joe and those guys. <laughs> I'm, not try- I'm, not, I'm not trying to make the equipment guys mad. Adam, uh, Mike Kosicki was telling us nobody, in the, nobody outside of this building thinks that he can block. Do you do you have to tell him <laughs> to ignore like social media or, and, and all that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, I mean, I'm, he's never said that to me. He knows how I feel about anybody else's opinion. So I'm a, I, I'm always killing him on it, anyways. You know, just reminding him what everybody thought. The thing that that I really appreciate about Mike is he wants to do it. He wants to get better at blocking, and he doesn't want to be a guy he doesn't want to be a receiver and I see him go out there and he tries to do it and he'll get he'll get he'll get crushed a couple times but he you don't see him shy away from it the next time you know I've seen tight ends in the past that happens and then they don't want no part of it because they don't want to be embarrassed he just lines right back up and does it again so you know we'll keep getting better in that area and I like that he's embracing it and he, he, he wants to be able to be left on the field. He doesn't want to get taken out and everybody says, oh, you know, like Omar thinks, like when he goes on the field, his pass, so. <laughs> how, has, um, how has Tankersley done uh, since last season to now? I think we've had ups and downs. You know, it's, that's the hardest thing about playing, playing corner at this level. It's, it's the consistency. You know, it's being able to come back from getting beat because you're going to get beat at this level. And I think he's had good days where it looks like, okay, here we go. And then we've had days where he's probably wanted him back. And we just got to keep finding that consistency. That's why we have training camp. That's why we have preseason. That's why we have all this time to get ready for the regular season to, you know, get your mind right, get better at, you know, your craft. And, you know, that's what he's trying to do. Adam, with, with guys like, like Minka, Masicki, Baker, how soon do you know that you can yeah, I don't, I don't, those guys, we don't have any, I mean, they're just running through walls right now. I mean, it's just the way they, they operate day to day. I mean, if you walk in this building and, you know, everybody's gone, they're, they're around, you know, they, they can see there's opportunity for them to play. You know, and at the end of the day, that's, that's what everybody wants to do. And sometimes when you get rookies that are hungry, and want to get out there, you know, they'll go earn jobs. That's good. Is there anything, uh, I guess, worried about Kenny Stills ankle? I'm, we're, we're still trying to figure out, like, how he keeps trying to get out there. We're trying to make sure that he's going to be okay. You know, he tried to run with the team yesterday. We had to hold him back from that. He was trying to go out there today. But we're just, I want to make sure that he's healthy before we put I don't want this to be a, a thing that's going into the season or we're four weeks in and he's still hurt. I don't want to do that because we keep having setbacks. So we'll we'll be smart with this. Is this a good opportunity for some of those other receivers, Albert and, and Jakeem, to get that work with Tannehill? hundred percent. That's why there were, we talked about in the spring about Jakeem and Albert kind of working with Ryan and, and we kind of came to, it's going to work out. It usually does. You know, we can do different personnel groupings to get those guys in there with them. And I think Ryan's done a good job of trying to grab those guys after practice and, and keep working on certain, you know, routes and the timing of things. So, but this usually happens, especially with wideouts in training camp. You usually have one or two that, that are missed times, and, and then the next guy has to step up. It's really, it's, sometimes it's good because now you get thrown in the fire. It's like you, you have to know what to do. So, you know, that's why everybody has to stay up on it. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the interviews. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, and as always, if you did, please hit the subscribe button, you know, share it with your friends, post on Facebook, you know, whatever, hit the like button, and definitely leave me some comments, questions, concerns, anything you'd like to see or hear in the videos, um, you know, stuff like that. So definitely let me know. And of course, the most important thing is subscribe. Uh, so with that said, I'll see you guys soon, and fins up.